We are starting our collective worship a little differently today. We're starting with some music. Last week, we listened to Johann Sebastian Bach. That was back. And among composing music for string instruments like violins, he also wrote music for the harpsichord. A harpsichord is a keyboard instrument in which the strings are plucked by small quills. Out of all the keyboard instruments we have, piano, organs, clavichords and harpsichords, the harpsichord has the longest pedigree. It was invented first in the 15th century and it only really died out in the French Revolution at the end of the 18th century. Inside every harpsichord are strings, but inside every harpsichord are also things called jacks, and that really lies at the heart of the harpsichord mechanism. It's called a jack because if I press the key very hard, it pops out like a jack-in-the-box, like this. These wooden jacks, uh, when I press a key, the jack goes up and the quill plucks the string. And the beauty of the harpsichord is that it has a very light action uh, and it has a beautiful silvery tone. Today, we're listening to Vivaldi. This is one of his most famous and most beautiful pieces of music. This one's called the Four Seasons.
spot the harpsichord in the background. You know, lots of string instruments being played there, lots of violins, the cello, and the harpsichord in the background. But who was Vivaldi? Meet Antonio Vivaldi. Antonio Vivaldi was born on March 4th, 1678 in Venice, Italy. Antonio's father was a barber and a professional violinist. He taught Antonio to play the violin and he practiced very hard. Soon, Antonio and his father were performing together and touring Venice. When Antonio turned 15, he decided to become a priest and began his training. At the age of 25, he was ordained and was referred to as Il Perete Rosso, which means the Red Priest. He got that nickname because of his red hair. In 1703, Vivaldi was invited to teach violin lessons at Ospedale della Pieta, an orphanage that taught boys a trade and gave girls a musical education. Vivaldi brought recognition to the Pieta through the concertos, cantatas, and sacred vocal music he wrote for the girls to perform. Their concerts were spectacular. Vivaldi's most popular composition is a set of concertos for the violin. The Four Seasons, written around 1716, are inspired by a poem for each season of the year. The most popular concerto is Spring. During his lifetime, Vivaldi was popular in many countries throughout Europe. However, after his death, Vivaldi's popularity declined. Even his most famous work, The Four Seasons, was relatively unknown during the classical and romantic periods. Today, Vivaldi is one of the most celebrated composers of the Baroque era. Okay, now we can begin. Good morning, everyone! So this week, in collective worship, we're learning about justice. Did you know that there's a global set of rights which is there to protect you? The United Nations Convention of the Rights of the Child was created in 1989 and is now used by many countries around the world to make sure your rights are protected. Did you know that every person in the world has human rights? Even children have rights. Human rights are the things that every person should have or be able to do. To live a good life with respect and security. Every person in the whole world has these rights because each of us is born equal in dignity and rights. Because children are young and sometimes weak, they need special protection so that they can enjoy their human rights. And it's for this reason that children's human rights have been written in a special document called the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Let's find out more. So what are these human rights in the Convention on the Rights of the Child? Well, the right to life means every child's life should be protected. Children have the right to live in a clean and safe environment with proper care and supervision by their parents or other adults. The right to education means that every child must receive quality instruction so that they're able to read, write and count and develop their mental and physical abilities so they can reach their full potential as adults. The right to food means that every child must have enough healthy food so they have strong and healthy bodies. The right to health means that children must be allowed to grow in a safe, clean environment so they can become healthy adults. They must be cared for when they're sick or injured. The right to water means children have the right to safe drinking water and a clean environment with proper toilet facilities. The right to identity 
means every child must be officially recognized as a human being with human rights. It also means every child has the right to a name, a nationality, and to know who his or her relatives are. Children also have the right to have an opinion and to tell people their views in a respectful way. They have the right to access information and to participate in decisions which affect their lives. The right to protection is the right to live in a secure and caring environment which keeps the child safe. Each child has the right to be protected from all forms of violence, physical or mental abuse, exploitation and slavery. Human dignity is a fundamental principle of human rights, which means that all people, without discrimination, deserve to be respected because they're human beings. It doesn't matter what age you are or where are you from. It doesn't matter what religion you are. It doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl. All individuals deserve respect and have the same rights. But where do these rights come from? Well, we are born with these rights because we are human. These rights are the things we must have so that we can live a healthy and peaceful life everywhere in the world. Our human rights were written down for the first time in 1945 in a document called the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Governments across the world realized that there was a need to give special attention to the rights of children. So, in 1989, governments adopted the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, popularly known as CRC. This convention guides governments and all citizens young and old, on what the human rights mean for children and what should be done so that children can enjoy these rights. By signing the Convention on the Rights of the Child, governments around the world promised all children these same rights. Governments have actually passed new laws to make sure people respect children's rights. But now everyone in society needs to help enforce and protect these rights, from parents, to educators and caregivers to children themselves. So all children, big or small, living in a village or city, anywhere in the world, are special in many different ways and you all have these rights. Our rights are all connected to each other and are all equally important. The right to live and grow, the right to eat enough healthy food, the right to drink clean water, the right to go to school, the right to learn many things, the right to receive care when you're sick, the right to be cared for by your parents or guardians, the right to have a name and belong to a country, the right to think for yourself, the right to share your ideas and be listened to, the right to practice your own religion, the right to be treated fairly by everyone, the right not to be enslaved, exploited, or do work that harms you. The right to play. The right to rest. And the right to have adults do what is best for you. Let's see how you can use these rights in your life. What do you think are your rights compared to what are your rights? There are 54 articles are included. Why are there so many? Well, it allows everything to be covered from your freedom to have a choice on many things to ensuring that you have the rights to open spaces for leisure. Here's a summary of those 54 articles. Rewind and have a look at them all. And if you like this prayer to be your prayer, it's armor at the end. You're welcome to look at the candle flame where you can put your hands and your eyes together. Dear God, thank you for giving us a sense of fairness and justice. Help us to think of our rights and the rights of others so that we may treat them fairly. Amen. Well, that concludes our collective worship for today. Remember, work hard, be kind, look after yourselves. I'll see you around school.